today's video is going to be something a bit different, something a lot different, something I have never done before. So a couple of days ago, I got an email and the email said, would you like to interview Ben Fogel? So for those of you who don't know who Ben Fogel is, he's this British adventurer, explorer type. He's exactly, he's exactly the type of person I look up to. Um, you know, everything is done. He's trekked to the South, or raced to the South Pole, rode the Atlantic. He's done so much exploring and adventure in his life. He's a professional adventurer. He's absolutely awesome. All round nice guy. I've admired him for many, many years. I got the email. Do you want to interview him? Yes, I do. I'm not a journalist and I've, I've never interviewed anyone before. So uh, I don't know if they think I'm some sort of professional, you know. And I'm also a bit worried that it's going to be this kind of corporate affair where they shove you in front of an advertising board and give you your five minutes. Um, but yeah, the truth is they haven't given me much information to go off. All I know is that today I get the chance to interview somebody who I have looked up to for a long, long time. But they do say you should never meet your heroes. So I'm incredibly nervous and I am well outside of my comfort zone. Is this too much? So this is it. This is my chance to meet somebody I've looked up to for so long. Um, and I'm very nervous and also quite excited. Um, I think if you guys want to meet him or see him, I think he's opening the motorhome show or talking at the motorhome show or doing something with the Caravan Motorhome Show on the 21st of Feb. So this is it. This is my first ever big celebrity interview. Probably my last. That's better. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Not photography related really, but I guess, I guess we'll just see what happens. Agreeing to do the interview, I was slightly concerned that it was going to be a bit of a press junket where if I was lucky I would get about five minutes in front of an advertising board and pressured to do a quick interview. But my god, could I not have been more wrong. So I'm looking for somewhere to interview Ben. Um, I also brought my assistant, that's Rob, also my best man at the wedding. And Monty. Monty, come on. And by far the coolest thing here is this retro camper van and I think this is where I'd like to do the interview. Ben, thank you for agreeing to interview. Oh. Ben, thank you for letting me interview you. My um, pleasure. Now you are, um, well in my opinion, you are certainly a hero, like a legend. I look up to thank you and all you. the stuff you've done. Yeah. Um, but. For those people watching this who don't know what you've done, can you tell me some of your passions and some of your experiences? Yeah, I'd, I would describe myself as a, a sort of a traveller, a journeyman, I suppose an adventurer. And I have basically spent the last 20, 20 nearly 25 years traveling extensively and I, I do all kinds of travel so literal travel just going to different corners of the globe um, uh, seeing the the great sights of the world but I also do endurance uh, travel so I've I've taken part in lots of uh, slightly more physical challenges like rowing the Atlantic or, or trekking to the pole and then I also do lots of immersive stuff so I live with people in far away remote corners of the world so as long as it's to do with travel and the outdoors and the wilderness, I love it. So have you, have you always been into the outdoors? Is that something you've always done ever since growing up as a child? Yeah, I, I grew up in the countryside in, in uh, Great Britain. My father's Canadian, so I spent lots of time out in the wilds of Canada. And then from the first chance I ever had to actually travel when I was about 18, just after my A-levels, I went off to Latin America. And, uh, and I travelled extensively for many, many years out there. And I knew then that I wanted to make a life somehow of travel. So one of the standout moments for me on uh, New Lives in the Wild, which is a TV show that you've done, was when, when you castrated a live goat with your teeth. So the question I have is, being an animal lover, how do you deal with the conflict between respecting local culture and eating various 
uh, foods, animals, parts of wildlife, but having that moral dilemma yourself. Yeah, it's, I love animals. I've got my dog here today as well. And it is, it's a hard one. It's, I'm a meat eater, and many of the places that I go, um, it involves hunting animals, catching animals, because that is the way people live sustainably in the wilderness. The, the example you just gave of the castrating of the goat in Namibia was it was quite a, a it was a really interesting ethical debate because the the person the people that I was living with that's how they castrate the goats. They they do it uh, swiftly using a knife and they use their teeth so that they don't lose the testicles inside the animal. We won't go into too much detail now. But I would argue actually having spent a lot of time seeing every form of castration it's probably one of the the most ethically sound, but it's hard. You know, when when I travel the world and I see um, people eating animals that I would prefer to look at rather than yeah. eat, it, it's hard. But you have to respect the cultures that you go to. There was an episode where I believe the gentleman you were living with ate a lot of roadkill, mm. and somebody brought a bear, mm -hmm. and you had to. I mean, it obviously it died of well. You could say natural causes, but most likely man-made mm -hmm. causes. Oh no, it was a hunted, wasn't it? Was yes, a, you know, it'd been hunted. It'd been hunted, and the hunters didn't yep. want it. So, how was that for you? Because obviously, for me, um, to see bears in the wild would be an absolute passion. You know, I love it. But then to have one presented to me mm -hmm. to eat, I would question whether or not to eat it. But if I was with the people and they were all eating it, I'd want to join in in how they live. Um, so yeah, that again, that stood out for me as one that would perhaps cause a moral dilemma. Mm -hmm. Well, and the moral dilemmas is all part of my experience. I want to, I want to see how they live and, and question their own way of life. And to do that, I have to sort of embrace it and um, live exactly as they do. I'm a photographer. My channel's about photography and the outdoors. Um, have, do you ever do photography or do you feel compelled to take photographs or do you not because you have a film crew with you and all of your memories are usually on DVD or that kind of thing? So. Is that something you ever do? I think travel is conducive to, to photography. You know, we all go there. We want to we want to take memories away with us. I don't. I I I am probably just a, a smartphone for snapper. So I, I just take my uh, my phone and I use that. But as the years have gone on, actually, I've become more and more fascinated. I started out um, in in photography. I was a picture editor many many years ago for a, a magazine. So uh, I have a, a huge interest in photography, but there is something about having a film crew with me, which I often do, knowing that they're filming it. Sometimes you can get lulled into a sense of, uh, a, a, of not needing uh, a photographer. But what I often find is that then years later, I have no record, no photographic record of yeah. certain places that I've been. So actually I'm starting to take more and more photos and, uh, and I think I probably will get a, a proper camera sometime soon. Of course, because there's a line as well, because um, some people, think that you should actually take less photos so you have a visual memory of it and again I think it's a fine line between not seeing everything through a screen and also taking away a couple of memories so I totally get that so you're really known for being a gentleman a really nice guy so my question is being famous and you are incredibly famous certainly in the UK um, how do you deal with perhaps being recognized when you may be tired or late or just not in the mood um, but everybody knows that you're this really nice guy. So how do you how do you manage that? <laughs> um, you know what? I, I, I think every every thing in life has a price to pay for it. There's no such thing as a free lunch. And uh, and I think if you're in the public eye as I am, you just have to respect the fact that um, uh, people who want to stop and say hello and chat and have a photo are the people that have given me the chance to do what. I've done and I really respect that. I, c I couldn't have done what I've done without the support of people in the UK and, and beyond. So yes, if I'm cold, running late, uh, not feeling up to being very social and people stop me and ask for a photo, I'll, I'll grin and bear it. Going back to expeditions, now you've done a lot of expeditions um, and of all the adventures you've done, have you ever been really scared? Most of my moments of fear have happened usually in very uh, extreme or remote places when our boat capsized rowing across the Atlantic, um, stepping on a crevasse field in Antarctica, diving with, with wild Nile crocodiles. I think all of those have, um, those are the moments when I remember feeling genuine kind of fear. Um, and how do you deal with it? I think, you, I think you just have to focus on the situation in hand and you have to kind of think rationally. You can't um, uh, you can't let it overcome you and uh, and I think it's just about thinking 
rationally about how you can get yourself out of that that moment or how to confront it. So a lot of people who watch this YouTube channel will have aspirations beyond what they're taught in school. So they'll want to be adventurers, they want to be photographers and travellers. What single piece of advice would you offer somebody who wanted to pursue a lifestyle uh, that fits that? Go for it. Just, just try it. Don't, don't, don't try to be too clever at thinking how to do it. Just, just do it. There's travel. If, if you want a life of travel, which is what I did, you just have to seize every opportunity. Just, just um, every opportunity that comes your way. Make opportunities. Make um, uh, challenges for yourself. And, uh, and I think it's just about getting outdoors and sharing those experiences with other people and don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. I'd now like to finish on some viewers' questions. So you can keep the answers brief. Yeah, sure. If that's okay. Sure. Um, so I, I mentioned I may be interviewing you or have the opportunity to do so and I said, would anybody like to ask Ben a question? So Great. I've got some here. Okay. Um, so this is from Kim Grant and she wants to know what's the most exciting and rewarding conservation project that you've been involved with? Uh, that would have to be, ooh, I've, I mean, I've been involved in a lot of different conservation projects over the years. I've just, I tell you, I've just, not necessarily conservation, but it's uh, an environmental one. I've just um, been part of a film called uh, The Plastic Oceans. And, uh, and it's about the plastification of our oceans and what we can do to try and save them. Uh, and I actually did a, a project off the coast of Sri Lanka. Um, trying to take biopsies from blue whales uh, to see if the plastic is actually getting into the blubber. And actually that film's out now. In fact, you can download it on iTunes in about two weeks' time. And I think that was an incredibly rewarding project to work on, and I hope it really makes a big difference. Okay, we'll just go for one more here. Um, so this, is, uh, this was quite an interesting question that struck me. This is from a gentleman called Chip Frund. I think that's how we pronounce it. Um, he says, after some of my big advent adventures, nothing as epic as Ben's, I often feel a post-adventure letdown, or the blues, I suppose you'd call it. How do you deal with it when you come back home and perhaps there's emptiness or it's not quite what it was, you know, when you're out in South Pole, for example? Uh, well, that's very easy for me. Uh, uh, it's called family. I come back, I've got two young kids, dogs, um, wife extended family so I, I come back and there is no void now years ago that was probably a bit different and I'd come back and it was a you know I was living in a little flat on my own and and you would you'd, you'd suffer um, adventure post-adventure blues and the best way to overcome it is just to plan another one plan another one fantastic well Ben thank you very much my pleasure for thank, you so, thank you so thank you so much no problem all right lovely great so considering I've never done an interview before I think I went quite well uh, ben was a really nice guy, top bloke, so really happy about that. And I got him to sign my calendar, which might seem a bit odd, but I've signed it as well. Um, now, I know my calendar's sold out. It has, obviously, I've got a couple of spares lying around, and I thought it'd make a really nice giveaway. So if you're a fan of Ben Fogel, and you want this calendar signed by him and me, um, just leave a comment below, and I'll pick one at random, and... I'll send it to you. So, signed calendar by me and Ben Fogel. Definitely one of my better giveaways, I think. So, once again, thank you for watching. Until next time, bye for now. That worked an absolute charm. I think what we have experienced today is a fine example of trying too hard.